transfer of statutory funds such as Get Fund and Common Fund. The MPP also promised to amend, you know, sections of the Criminal Offences and Criminal and Other Offences Act to make corruption a felony and not misdemeanor, and also reform laws to set time limits within which an appointing authority must fill any vacancy or confirm a person acting. And of course, the government talked about passing the right to information bill. And the government, while also in opposition, promised a strict enforcement of the Public Procurement Act. Lots of promises, aren't they? So after three and a half years, how would you assess the government's fight against corruption? Do you think the government has shown enough commitment to winning the fight against corruption? Have the current happenings proven that the promises were all rhetorics? What does the directive to Yao Domelebu to proceed on leave and the subsequent locking of his office tell you? Well, this evening, that's our focus. Our focus is on rating the performance of the Akufu led administration or the NPP government when it comes to their fight against corruption. My name is Winston Amwa, and this is Upfront. When we return after the break, I'll be introducing my guest, but I also would share with you what President Akufuado himself said when it comes to his fight against corruption. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. Right, thank you very much for staying with us. This is Upfront, if you just joined us, and today we're focus is on rating the performance of the government when it comes to the fight against corruption. Before I even introduce my guest to you this evening, uh, let's just watch what President Akufuado said in relation to his fight against corruption when he met the press in 2018, talking about how well his government is committed to fighting corruption. A significant choice, though that Mr. Amidu is, I do not expect that he will provide all the answers will deal with the phenomenon of corruption by public officials. But I do believe that at the least, the office will remove the fear of partisan prosecution and begin to put the fear of God in all public officials who are intending to go down the path of corruption. Just in case it needs reiterating, let me state again, the current office holders are as likely to be investigated and prosecuted by the special prosecutor if a case is made out against them as past office holders. At all times, the rule of law must be adhered to. I've made it publicly known that anyone who has information about acts of corruption against any of my appointees should bring it forward and should be prepared to back it up with evidence. So far, every single act of alleged corruption labeled against any member of my administration has been or is in the process of being investigated by independent bodies and the findings so far made public. From the allegations against the Minister for Energy designate at his parliamentary confirmation hearings, to that against the CEO of BOST, to those against the two deputy chiefs of staff, to the claims of extortion against the trade minister, and to those against the Minister for Special Development Initiatives, they have all been investigated, and no evidence has been adduced to suggest mildly perpetration of any act of corruption. However, some people appear determined to stick to their politically motivated view that there has been corruption. This surely is not a helpful practice. It is important to note that in this, my first year of office, two separate bipartisan probes in Parliament have been established to inquire into allegations of corruption as against zero in the Mahama years despite the persistent calls by the then minority. I have a greater interest in my appointees not being corrupt than any critic could possibly have. Try me, produce the evidence to back the allegation and see what the, the reaction will be. But I think it is also worth pointing out that we should be careful about the new trend that appears to be emerging, whereby any allegation 
no matter how spurious, quickly gains the character of, quote, a scandal. Right, so that's President Akufuado there. After a year in office, he talked about how he was doing everything possible to fight corruption. And for him, so long as there's evidence, he certainly would investigate that. Well, this evening, we've been joined by Franklin Kujo, who is president for Imani Center for uh, Policy and Education. He'll be helping us and, uh, you know, assess uh, President Akufuado. There's been three and a half years, uh, you know, there's a party that campaigned on uh, reducing corruption, if I could borrow the words of, uh, you know, Yao Domino, because he says in Ghana it's very difficult, uh, you know, to win against corruption or eradicate corruption. Mr. Kujo, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, so let's get straight into action. And it's been three and a half years. Uh, 2016 was, you know, um, contested based on election one, promising to protect uh, the country's purse and as a result ensure the judicial's use and also eradicate corruption. Has that happened? Well, um, I, I guess we just need to look at the, the, the indices that measure corruption, and indeed indices that measure good governance, and then, uh, and then lay it out um, so, that, so that beyond what I would say, uh, being some of my personal views, as well as those that are playing out very, before our very eyes, um, I must yield to what the experience international actually says. I think the fight against corruption has worsened uh, under this administration than before. If we look at the the, the performance on our index, index, it's not markedly different though, but uh, if Muhammad did a 40, um, we are doing, uh, what's it called? If Muhammad did a 41 or so, we are doing a 40. And so what it means is that Clearly speaking, just on the basis of that in this index, in the index alone, uh, the, the story bears us negatively out. So having said that, I think that it's true when the president says that the mere allegations of corruption should not be substituted for the fact. But it's the behavior of the way, the behavior, I mean, the way these allegations are treated is what feeds into people's psyche to conclude that the fight, just as the international in the index has realized, is being lost. And I yield to those views because I, I still maintain the president is very weak when it comes to dealing with corruption in his administration. Why, um, why, why do you say he's weak when it comes to dealing with corruption in his administration? Well, simply because he typically would say, okay, well, let's have some body do some investigation and in the process sometimes the investigation itself is not conclusive i mean there are problematic aspects of the investigation look at the audit was the special prosecutor yeah. you know how long it took the special prosecutor to gain momentum and when he started gaining momentum the special prosecutor complained that even cases that have been cited that have been brought before him He's been thwarted by, his efforts have been thwarted by people in government. I'm sure we heard all of that. Yeah. I'm listening. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm sure you didn't hear. So I'm using the the stage, the performance of the stage uh, of actors within the government and the president's apparent, if you like, sleepy, uh, well, more or less um, acquiesce in a way. Uh, which leads me to the characterization that is typically weak. He, he evokes charm, and I think it's very useful to evoke a lot of charm. His personal integrity is intact, by the way. I mean, I think the president evokes a lot of uh, exuberance and a lot of uh, charisma. I do not personally think that the president is corrupt. I don't think so. But he's overly loyal to persons who have been cited and act that look like corruption, appear like corruption, and actually it's corruption. Mm. And um, there have been, I don't want to use the terminology that people, the opposition people tend to, to use, uh, use, use on him, that he's been clearing people. Uh, but that is uh, precisely what has been playing out. And mm. I, I, I worry because you see, um, the whole idea of using the NAS principle to fight corruption, uh, when Anas did that, that expose, 
I, I think the gentleman and the people that were caught in the web are still at post. I mean, if they are not receiving their salary, they are performing other roles as well. Mm. So I see a king who is very interested in whites trying to solve issues, but I suspect that his his his, his trump card, which is loyalty above criticism, is unfortunately not helping the cause. So I'm looking at global indices the behavior of actors that are fighting corruption, the way they've been treated, look at Doma level. We we'll get to that Doma level bit. I mean, we'll get to Doma level. But the president talks about the fact, he said this before, that look, anybody who's being accused of corruption in his administration has been investigated. If that person has been cleared, then yeah, it is institutions of state that have cleared him and not he, the president. Which institutions? He says the CID, uh, the parliament, They've investigated these persons, and so it's not he, Akufado, saying you did no wrong, but it's Parliament saying you did no wrong. So in the case of uh, Boache Jacon, in the case of uh, uh, the cash for seats... By the way, hold on, before you go ahead, did you see the boss report? There was no report. I, 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 no I, I didn't report. mention boss. I haven't seen the boss report. Yes, go ahead. Yes, there was, not, there was nothing, and I can say this on authority. People in government, higher up, told me Look, stop asking for the report, because there's no report. You see, so let's not get into, much as I, I feel uncomfortable discussing the subject because I personally have been let down. Uh, and I'm trying to say that we made a lot of noise about Mahama, um, only for us to, you know, superintend what, what, what has not changed. And the global indices bears, bears out. The behavior of actors in government against anti-corruption agencies bears out. So, look, there was no boss report. So let's not pretend that there was any investigation. There was nothing. You, if you saw that report, bring it and let's discuss it. You see, um, look, I, I want to be less charit. I want to be really charitable. Uh, I'm, I'm mortified that we should even be talking about. Some some fight against corruption. I don't see it. I I don't I don't know where it is. You think there's no fight against corruption? Well, you know, you you see again. I'm just asking you a question. If the auditor general, who initially was full of praise for getting resources to do his work, which by the way was a good thing, let's not let's not discount that. Is not entangled with the very actors in government who thought, I don't even understand that whole diatribe, really, because I don't know what it is. Except the way it's played out, and I can say that the way it's played out makes it look to me that somebody wants to hide something. But otherwise, it's just simple information being requested. Why should this become a problem? Why should it be locked out? Why should it go and leave? Your number one person who, who fights graft and fights corruption um, is the one that is being hounded. Don't forget, the special prosecutor mostly deals with things after the fact. I mean, the special prosecutor is more interested in act, uh, uh, crimes that were committed in the previous administration, which is a good thing to do. But precisely the reason why we said that the special prosecutor may be fighting uh, battles that would have occurred probably three, four years and may last the, the term of a particular government. These are expensive court battles that will be fought. Fighting corruption actually begins at, at home. That's, that's what I've got to say. And I tend to look at the Office of Special Government, sorry, Office of Government Machinery, and I look at the way the budget has been stacked up there. And the Office of, uh, what's it called, the Special Development Ministry, mm. whose budget is, is not necessarily too clean. And you ask yourself that when people complain that some of the dams that were supposed to have been built are dry dams, they tell you that, well, that was not what we promised. You, you want to get into the nitty gritties of all of this, and then you want to have a global picture of what corruption is. Corruption is not just stealing money. It's about actually padding budget to do very silly stuff, uh, which are wasteful. So let's not pretend that there's been some fight even the ones that we know, the traditional actors who are supposed to fight against corruption are being maltreated. Okay. The special prosecutor himself was maltreated for a lot for a significant while. He didn't have an office. His budget was in limbo until eventually it was paid. When it was paid, when he started work, 
he complained. Auditor General, who deals with on the spur of the moment ac ac actions, by the way, because he doesn't want to wait for two, three years before coming to audit persons. And when he starts the audit, everybody is now complaining. Look, audits are very useful. And I've been telling people this thing, that audits let you know what gaps exist. Okay. I mean, we that's, that's the way it ought to be. But if you are seen to be threatening the efforts of this act test, what does he want me to tell you? That you are doing so well. well I'm sorry. Okay. I don't see how you are doing well. Because you are your very actions, you're actually nailing your own coffin. Okay. I but don't see Franklin, I mean, talking about how cases have been handled and how cases have been treated. So, yes, uh, when it comes to the BOST investigation, I haven't seen a report. Uh, the last information we heard about it was the fact that national security said they had cleared uh, Mr. Obeng at the time. But when it comes to... There was no reports. Yes, I mean, I am, I am corroborating what you have said. But when it comes to... The same the, agency told me, by the way, that there was no reports. Good. So let me finish. You, you, you get my question. When it comes to the uh, two deputy chiefs of staff... CID investigated them. When it comes to the cash for seat, it was investigated by Parliament. It was telecast. We saw it. You don't trust these processes? You don't think that these processes uh, did the right job by saying there was nothing uh, fishy in there? Those persons have been cleared? Well, look, let me not put people's reputations here at stake. I mean, I think the two gentlemen uh, the Dep deputy chief of staff are good friends of mine, and I can say that I do not necessarily know the full facts. Um, I I really do not know the essence of the fact. I did not follow that issue properly. The cash for seats, I thought was uh, probably a needless thing because to be true be told, um, people do lobby, uh, and I know stories about persons who want to get favors to the presidency, not just this president, but the presidency in general, all over the world. I mean, people pay money to sit close to the president. I don't see, I typically, that was a bit of hot air. I really did not see the point in that that particular hula, hula balloon because I, look, some of us, we are small fries. Um, sometimes people mediate for us to see big people across the world. And, and they, sometimes they take fees. I've not paid any, but I've been favored to meet very, very influential persons in the world. And the persons that were contacted were lobbyists. I think some actors paid on my behalf. Mm. Is that wrong? I don't see anything. I think it's a business deal. You don't think but it's wrong for anybody to pay? I mean, if we have a president uh, sitting in an award scheme, those who sit closely to him get to pay the organizers well, you to know, see our president. You know, Winston, Winston. Winston, you see, let me tell you something. I've been involved with a lot of international events. I've spoken at a lot of them. The seats that are sold, right? If you sit close to the presidency of a particular organization, you, you must have paid some money. Mm. And I've been fortunate to sit close when I have, I'm speaking at some of these big world events. The table alone, each person is paid $25,000, okay. right? These are the think tank level. So. For me, that was not really necessary. You see, the things that we should be focusing on are the procurement in spite corruption. That's where all of this sits. Your own Manasi is probably going to get a good deal out of the Shrat investigation, right? Mm. The procurement shenanigans that go on, and I don't believe don't believe any of those stories about savings. There was no there's no savings anywhere. There's no savings anywhere. Benchmarking them against what? You are procuring the same thing, cement, roofing sheets, water closet. You are not procuring things from outer space. So you can't tell me that by doing some calculation, you've made savings. Savings against what? But that's where all the corruption sits, my brother. So let's not, these are incidents that have been happy, of course. Uh, but the point I'm making is that if the first incident, the bust come down, you didn't see any paper trail, I wonder why you want to believe the rest. Why should I believe the rest? Okay. The fact of the fact that my good friends were, were cited in those cases. They have to clear themselves, and I think they did what they did. I didn't follow that case particularly well, but I, I started losing faith. Immediately, there was, I was told that there was no boss report. Hmm. And that moment made me realize that this so-called fight was a waste of everybody's time.
Okay. It's so, the same thing. Look, 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 look at Unipass and all of that. I put it to my good friend, uh, the Deputy Minister of Trade. Whether he had seen the feasibility report and the contract for the Unipass, the changeover at the port, he said he hadn't seen it. You can go to Metro, you, they, you, they'll play it back to you. He's not read the contract, he's not seen the feasibility report, yet he was defending the contract. Who does that? So most of these big tickets, he things that you hear about, look at the EC thing. You spend so much money in a pandemic when we need critical funds. You are going to spend around 50 million to get a worthless register with over 40% uh, I mean, uh, curiously guaranteed persons. The EC so data is telling you that by the time they finish this exercise, about 40% would have been guaranteed. Codeo today mentioned that up to 28% of polling stations are contractor guarant guarantors. So you spend so much money under very dubious procurement means to go and get a worthless register. Those are the things we should be talking about. So for me, that's what I tell you that I'm not missing words. The moment the, the fight began and that docket was never seen because there was no docket, there was no report, somehow I, it lost it for me. In fact, it's only by the grace of God that we still keep talking about some of these issues. So, 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 I mean, yeah, let me tell you something else. This scary thing, even though it appears I'm a stop from talking about it, because somehow I told you that professionally, the way things went, we had to settle. Mm -hmm. There was no the contract. The contract was a good Samaritan who saw it and brought it to us, signed by two ministries, Ministry of Communication and Finance. It didn't go to Parliament, right? It had a seventy-eight million dollar contract. Nobody, no parliamentarian saw it. Nobody saw it, but it's there. And we are paying money. And you want to say that you want to bring an austere budget. When you could have yanked off that project immediately to save some significant money. That shouldn't have been CST tax. Now it is appears as if they are doing us a favor by taking the tax away. I calculated and said that the CST increase, the increase in CST was equal to the amount we were going to pay currently for no significant work done. Mm. Why? So okay. that's what I'm saying that corruption should not be seen as. Somebody is doing pillow low, I've stolen money, I've not stolen, I've been caught on tape, I've not been caught on tape. There are very, very varied ways of uh, doing, uh, engaging in corruption. Mm. And so let's not limit that. So, yeah, so, so I'm let's not look telling at... you that. Mm -hmm. I'm submitting to you that I look at international indices, the actors who are fighting corruption, the way they are being treated. Mm. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I tell you, I eat data and produce evidence. That's all it, it is really. And we all ought to be subjected to the strictest forms of audit. Sure. Some of us have been subjected to it. Mm -hmm. And when we've been found, uh, if, if a donor says, uh, you haven't spent my money well, yes, you pay back. I don't see why the Auditor General should be har harassed simply because he's asking senior minister, show us the work that has been done. You claim the work is national security. This same national security, that couldn't produce a boss report. Yeah, you want us to believe that they have a report that is so special, that is so hallowed, that okay. is so sentimental. So, so let me come in at this point. Let me come in at this point, uh, uh, Franklin. So you've been talking about uh, when it comes to procurement. Now, let's start with the law because, well, the government talks about ensuring strict adherence to the Public Procurement Act. Uh, the Public Procurement Act uh, talks about... Uh, you know, the uh, evaluated bid, whether it's, I mean, a responsive evaluated bid. And we have, uh, you know, um, restrictive tendering, competitive tendering, and you have, uh, you know, the uh, single sourced contracts also. These are provisions within the Public Procurement Act. So if anybody goes according to these, frankly, what bad has the person done? Winston, you may have to repeat what you said. Because it okay, looks so, like so, my internet or uh, okay, okay. Okay. Like mine okay, or so, um, I'm saying that if you look at the public procurement, I mean, since you've made reference to dealing with procurement, I just would want to know what challenges you have with procurement. Are they issues to do with uh, illegality, sidestepping the Public Procurement Act, or what specifically? Let me give you two examples sure. of, of how, how nonsensical the whole procurement process is, mm. in spite of the laws. So I take it from Kelvin. Yeah, I'll share, maybe you, people didn't follow that story properly. When you look at the, the report that were written 
from the Central Tender Committee, advising that, look, be careful. This thing is not... Document. They didn't understand what they were dealing with, the project. They have zero expertise in what they were dealing with. And they were the ones who eventually passed it. In any case, like I told you, if the procurement was so sanctimonious, how come the contract was eventually just cobbled between two ministries and not presented in parliament? Because if it was presented in parliament, I'm sure there would have been some significant conversations about it. I'm not referring to the after the fact when the minister had to appear in parliament and defend it too. There was nobody would have seen it. I'm telling you, it was sent to me at the dead of night, the day or two before it was going to be consummated. And if you want to consummate the 178 million dollar contract, when the procurement itself was whack, was was typically, for lack of a better word, a useless process, then you want to say that you have value for money and hide under a law that says that the law allows you to do restricted tender. I'm submitting to you, Winston, that even the restricted tendering was symbolic. Take the EC one. Mm. The, the, the whole process was so symbolic that... How, how was the, it symbolic? How symbolic it was was that the chairman of the committee, who wanted the right things to be done first, after going through the motions for almost four or five months, was told that, look, they didn't like the process. And when he, ob he objected... They set up, they kicked him out and set up a new committee within one week, made up of people who had, who had zero understanding of what there was going to be procured. And within one week, had passed a $150 million contract and then made it into a, a fully fledged contract. All I'm telling you is that the procurement law is not really fit for purpose because. It's better we start making it look like this, it's really so saucy. The moment you say that, oh, oh, you can do restricted tendering and you can so source. I mean, why do you so source? You so source or restrict, you do restricted tendering when you believe that the capabilities you are securing only exist probably amongst two or three people. But now what you are procuring is all over the place. You can, you can, you can virtually buy uh, well, customized uh, uh, specs of, of the shelf, we don't we don't do that. You don't you don't restrict those type of tenders. So if anybody comes and says I've done savings, and by the way, when we pointed out civil society groups, about twenty two of us pointed out to the finance minister and asked him to show us how he made savings from all this procurement he claims, he said ah, we should go ask the PPA because they produce the report. Mm. But the minister has got the parliament to say they made savings. The president has been saying they made savings. When asked, they said the PPA. Meanwhile, you are the one who pays the money. It's not the PPA that pays the money. So you should be able to tell us that these savings were made based on ABCD. But not, nothing of the sort was made. Look, I'm not coming across as if I'm really attacking this government on the basis of their fight against corruption. All I'm trying to say is that the two of them are no different. And when you say, when you say fact, the two of them, who are the two of them? NDC and MPP are no different. In fact, uh, if, it, if, 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 if we were to be candid, I think corruption fight has been more liberal under this administration than ever. At least under the previous administration, they prosecuted some of their own, right? Mm -hmm. I know Abu Gapeli and I know a few people who went to jail. I don't see any efforts here. What you say, they say, ah, you don't have any evidence. What you are saying is, I've forgotten the description the president used. Um, but the point is really is that the president even promised using the NAS principle. When the NAS principle was eventually used, what happened? You know? So that's what I'm saying that I'm not looking at the... Well, that case, that I, case is still with a special prosecutor. What? Which one? Are you, are you making reference to the Galamsey fraud? <laughs> Isn't it laughable that since the video was produced with all these un incontrovertible evidence, uh, well, I know that in law, even if you are caught killing, you must be presumed to be innocent. But if anybody was interested to get to the bottom of that case, it should have been done and dusted long ago. 
Why should he take two months? I've lost seven counts. I've even forgotten that the case was even sent to some special prosecutor. You know, but as he talks about the special prosecutor in very interesting terms this morning on your own network. Mm -hmm. When he says he took the cases to special prosecutor, he took the same case to, I'm talking about the contract for sale. He took the same case to the shrug. Shrug is almost done with its work. He's not being invited. He's, he's not had a word from the special prosecutor. This an office was set up with close to 200 million Ghana cities. It looks to me that we are wasting money setting up these institutions when we need the money to actually aid so, in so, the so, process. So, 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 so Franklin, I mean, one of the reasons for setting up the special prosecutor's office is because of the uh, argument at the time that the attorney general's uh, department or the attorney general, you know, being an appointee of government, uh, may not have the balls, if I could put that way, to prosecute its own. If the special prosecutor isn't doing these things. And, well, the special prosecutor, when CID came out to say they had cleared Mr. Bissu, said no, he, he was still investigating it. In that case, so should, 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 for instance, the presidency or uh, the political class be blamed when the special prosecutor, which was set up to do these things, says, I am still investigating? <laughs> you know... It goes to point to the fact that the his, his efforts have been interrupted anyway. Look, it's a waste of time. Let this cantata must end at some point. This this having this conversation is quite nauseating because my point is that you have a special prosecutor in who who expected two hundred million Ghana cities finally giving him an office. And while he while he seems to be working, um, some other entity which is supposed to be working closely with, by the way, because the CID is supposed to be working with him, right? How can the CID go ahead of him and clear him, clear the people, when he's still working? You see the concept that is going on? That's the cantata I'm referring to you about. So you just want the actors play on stage, like Shakespeare said, and then you, you, and then you defy what is going on. It is laughable. I mean, look, there's no seriousness about this whole issue. That's why I say that I feel the president is typically weak because, you see, he must be, have been impressed upon by 30 weeks to say, look, maybe you shouldn't deal with this person in a particular manner. But look at his body language when he spoke, when he played that tape. It appeared that he would have sent shivers down the spine of everybody who might have been cited in any corruption case. But if the people who have been cited can be freed by one investigative body, which is supposed to be working in concert with the special prosecutor, whom the president believes so much in. Therein lies the cantata. I mean, you are giving me examples. You see, because I've decided to tune off on these matters, you are rather helping me with a lot of examples, by the way. So bring them on. <laughs> I'll tell you, while you bring them on, I describe to you why it is another feather in the cup of the great cantata. Well, I mean, I'll bring more examples, but that will be after this short break. <laughs> and when we return after this break, we'll continue uh, with our conversation on rating the performance of the president when it comes to the fight against corruption. This is Upfront on Joy News Channel. I'm Winston Amwen. Our guest is uh, the president of Imani Center for Policy and Education, Franklin Kujo. We'll be right back after this break. Right, so welcome back from that break, and uh, thank you very much for staying. If you just joined us, this is Upfront on Joy News Channel. My name is uh, Winston Amwa, and tonight we've been joined by Franklin Kujo. We're having an, a conversation on assessing the president's fight, or the government's fight against uh, corruption. So, yes, Franklin, before, be, before we went for the break, yes, we're talking about some of these things. But one of the promises that the government also made, uh, you know, was um, amending a law, for instance, to make, you know, uh, to change corruption from a misdemeanor to felony, something that is currently in Parliament and uh, being worked on. Also, uh, the Right to Information Act has been passed. One of the things that civil society uh, fought for and believed it was going to help in the fight against corruption. Doesn't these in any way convince you that some attempts are being made in fighting corruption? Sorry, the first example you gave before the Right to Information Act, um, I mean, I think my, my line was a bit finicky. So, so that's uh, the... Uh, amendment of the Criminal and Other Offences Act to make uh, to change uh, corruption from a misdemeanor to felony, which is currently in mm. Parliament. It's in Parliament, and it's been, um, mm. you know, ch um, amended if passed. Uh, uh, if, if you engage in corruption, it comes with a stiffer punishment 
and also the passage of the Right to Information Act, which uh, many well, of you in civil society even, felt it was going to even, aid. Even, even, even before the the amendment should be will be done, my own good friend, the lawyer Kojuanan, had said time with that number that there are still statutes on our books. 1978, the NRC decrees in this, uh, I think, 78, which makes corruption a very, very punitive uh, uh, enterprise. I mean, you are you are you are found capable. You are sentenced to not less than 10 years in, to, to to jail, and then you are made to pay sometimes twice the amount that you 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 must have uh, either embezzled or misappropriated. So there are already statutes in our, um, in, well, there are laws already that we can refer to. The only reason why these things are not done is again because the political class have colluded, and when there are cases against them, they hardly would want to even cite those uh, measures as, as punishment. So well, we welcome that amendment process, but I think it should take cognizance of the fact that there are already punitive that that exists on our books anyway, and many lawyers know about this. The Right to Information Act was a good one. Clearly speaking, uh, you need information to oil the wheels of government. I think it's in the best interest of government rather than probably in the interest of citizens to have a free, free uh, freedom of information. But what has happened since then? I mean, well, there have been some baby steps. Recently, a lawyer had to go to court against the EC to ask for simple information about the procurement process that led to the procurement of the biometric verification equipment. You know what the EC said? They said they don't, they will not give it to him and that he should pay. And that they don't have money to they don't have time to process it. Mm. He said, they said, they said that the, the fees and charges have not been passed. So uh, there's nothing they can do if you... Yeah, but uh, yeah. but but the point was that the amount they were talking about, the information that was being requested, you know, you know, you know how many pages? It's about 35 pages. About 35 pages. At worst, 50 pages. That information, the EC says they don't have money, and they said he was willing to pay. Eventually, they did back and forth. He had to go to court in order for the court to pass to pass judgment, that the EC must give the information. So there's everything good about setting up laws, as always we have always done. But in practice, this has always been problematic. So that's the problem that I'm dealing, we are dealing with in this, in, in this, in this enterprise mm -hmm. called fight against corruption. By the way, like I, as I kept saying, corruption is not when people have just stolen money. Even the very processes of coming up with budget, and some of the, 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 what's it called? Especially when we look at the Office of Government Machinery, the budgets that sit there are staggering and mouth watering. And because it, it is controlled by the presidency, you hardly want to ask questions. Look, when this president took power, we did a paper. If you Google it, you see, we said fighting corruption begins, charity began, begins at home. Fighting corruption begins with the Office of Government Machinery. If you want to see the source of corruption in this town or whether the corruption is cooked, it is always at the Office of Government Machinery. Take a critical look at the budget, pre subsequent budget of the Office of Government Machinery right from Atamosis' time after this administration, and you see budget overruns. In some instances, between 2012 and 2015, we had budget overruns of close to 300 million Ghana cities. Just like that because it's made up of amorphous entities who are all subsumed under the office of the president, office of government machinery. They may be untouchable, but that's where all the waste sits. In fact, we did the calculation, I said, before the office of, of special prosecutor was going to be created, if we were really interested, by taking a fine scalpel, raking through the, some of the offices that are at the office of government machinery, we will save about $50 million even before the Office of Special Prosecutor was set up. But it fell on deaf ears. You know what the MPP did? They became yeah. clever. Whereas the NDC administration had budget overruns, they typically would project, let's say, would spend maybe 500 million. They go over and they overrun it by about 300 million. So the budget becomes 800 million or a billion. What the MPP did was they studied the process, they studied the scenario and realized that the NDC had a typical budget overruns of some averagely 
300, 400 million cities. So they padded it up and made sure that the budgets would not be overrun. And in 2017, the Office of Government Machinery got 1.5 billion Ghana cities. The budget overrun was just around 100 million or so for that year. 2018, they made it 3 billion to accommodate the 1 million per constituency money, which was supposed to go into building some dams, yeah. right? Sure. So the point to be making is that the more the size of government becomes bigger, and where the Office of Government Machinery has all manner of entities that are not properly defined and delineated, but have some just budget, that is a source of mis 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 misuse and misapplication of resources. So let's not see corruption as an entity where people are being caught uh, for, for stealing or doing anything. The processes of pardon and wasting in itself is corruption. And you see, the problem is that because the Office of Grand Machinery is supposed to be to harbor all manner of entities, what it means is that it's very difficult to subject some of their budget. They'll tell you, oh, that's not security. Oh, is this security? Okay. You see the symptoms of that is playing out with Domelevo right now, when Domelevo says, well, as senior minister, yes, you are sitting at the Office of Government Machinery, you have a budget, but I want to be sure that this money you spent was for value for money. Mm. If you want to find out the reasons why I'm, I'm giving you a litany of issues surrounding the budget overruns and how budgets are subsumed, nebulous budget are subsumed under the Office of Government Machinery, that typical case is the level versus the senior okay. minister. That's exactly what I'm talking so, about. So, so I mean, you, you, we've looked at the international ratings. In 2019, it was 41. Uh, if I ask you to do your own rating and your own assessment, what would it be? Oh, me I only look at the international people and, act. of course, the point is that if you listen to the tenor of my arguments this evening, you don't even want to ask me for a rating because there's no skill. Oh, I don't skill. know what skill I should use. Mm. And you say you've been let down by the administration. You had high hopes in this administration? Let me tell you some story. Look, at the risk of saying that some people had vested interest in the previous administration being thrown out of office, that's because some of the things we saw were abhorrent. And some of the decisions some of us took in 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 intellectually investing in groups like Occupy Flagstaff House and Occupy Gambia. We didn't, we didn't treat those things lightly. Because I thought that we've done a lot of advocacy against some of these ills. Okay. And it's not fair enough. No. Now you set up a pressure group to be able to do that. Then you come back and then the same things are playing out and probably worse. You should be disappointed. Great. Obviously, you should be disappointed. All right. Franklin, that's all time would allow us. Uh, we're very grateful that you made time to join us. We certainly would continue the conversation another time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Franklin Kujo, who is president of Imani Center for Policy and Education, joining us uh, today on Upfront. Uh, and he says that, well, the fight against corruption, very non-existent. He says that the NPP in fighting corruption is too liberal compared to uh, the NDC. Things that the president, even though his integrity is intact, the president uh, fight against corruption. The president is weak in fighting uh, corruption. My name is Winston Amwa, and on behalf of the team, we're glad that you joined us this evening uh, on Upfront. Keep watching Joy News Channel. Up next is Joy News Prime. Do have a lovely evening.